All right. So uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for uh, tuning in with us tonight for uh, a bit of an encore presentation of the uh, Dominion Mock Trial Moot Court Competition Information Session. We're really delighted to have uh, so many here with us tonight. And uh, we had a really great session last night with about 25 to 30 uh, interested uh, participants, parents, teachers. So we're really excited to to have everyone along with us uh, tonight for uh, for the in session. So my name is Matt Wilkes. I'm a lawyer, but but I'm also a uh, high school teacher here. And I'm joined by three wonderful panelists from uh, Dominion Mock Trial. I have John Wu, who is a graduating JD MBA student and is the uh, president of Dominion Mock Trial. We have uh, Dalila Bikic, who's a uh, graduating uh, law student with getting her JD from Osgoode Hall Law School, and she'll be articling uh, this coming year. And then we have Stephen Marchand, who's a uh, who's just finishing his first year at Osgoode Hall Law School, and uh, and will be continuing on in his uh, legal education. I'll tell you a bit, little bit more about our panelists later on, but uh, all three are are wonderful sources of information and very committed mooters who are who shared some wonderful stories with everyone yesterday about the benefits that uh, mooting has had for them. So we will uh, be able to, to benefit from their knowledge very much. So in this presentation today, we're really gonna be introducing everyone to what Dominion Mock Trial does and a little bit about the competitions that we're going to be holding. Now, the structure for this presentation is really, we're gonna take about 20 minutes to do an introduction and an overview about who we are, what we do, the competitions that we're gonna be holding. We're gonna do a little bit of an introduction into what mooting is because we realize for many people, this may be the first time that you're hearing about mooting. We'll explain a little bit about how to register for our, uh, our upcoming moot competition called the Dominion Varsity Cup for high school students. And we'll have a bit of time for questions at the end. And I do note that you can feel free to, uh, to the chat is enabled. So if you'd like to put questions in the chat, we'll make sure to get to them towards the end of the, uh, the presentation. And otherwise we are accessible via email for anybody who would like to uh, have uh, other questions answered. Okay, so we'll spend about, spend about the first 20 minutes doing that. And then we'll have the opportunity to hear from our wonderful panelists about their own experience when uh, they were mooting, some of the benefits that uh, mooting has had for them in their education as well as in their work and, and how this is a, a really accessible, but, uh, you know, but uh, competitive format that, that is really fun for students and is something that, uh, that's really an awesome experience to engage in there. So that's the schedule for tonight. And we'll try to stick on time because we're very cognizant that, um, that people have busy schedules and have places to be. So we're gonna try and be as respectful of the time as possible here, okay? So uh, who we are. So really here at Dominion Mock Trial, we're a team of legal professionals and other interested parties who are aiming to expand legal education. We've noticed that um, across Canada, there is, uh, there is a bit of a need and students are telling us that they would like more opportunities to um, have really accessible opportunities to engage in uh, practice-based activities that connect the learning that they are doing in the classroom with the work that lawyers and other legal professionals do. So we know in Ontario here, we have the Ontario Justice Education Network, which facilitates mock trials at the high school level. And uh, we, we uh, see nationally that, uh, that there is an interest in that. We'd love to be able to expand that out across Canada. Now, uh, the leaders of this organization are, uh, are lawyers and, and law students who are very experienced in mooting, in mock trials, and coaching high school students when it comes to uh, these activities. So we all have collectively a very strong interest in providing students with rich educational opportunities to really develop their ad advocacy skills in preparation for post-secondary opportunities. We know that uh, students really learn best when they have uh, the opportunities, again, to connect the learning that they do in the classroom with things that are going on in the real world. And we view mooting as uh, something that is a very accessible option to do that and to dip, your, dip students' toes in the water when it comes to uh, doing the work that lawyers really do. So we'll talk a little bit more about mooting in a bit, but you can see the picture on the right of the screen is an example of a very formal moot competition that is being held in front of judges. 
Okay. But we'll talk a little bit more about what mooting is and how that's differentiated from mock trials. But that's what our commitment is, is really trying to bring forward these accessible and practical opportunities with, to students with a fairly low barrier uh, for entry. And we're very committed to organizing these legal advocacy competitions. So providing opportunities to showcase these skills, to engage critically with social issues and develop valuable connections, both among students themselves, but with actors within the legal profession and the, uh, the legal industry. We're also committed to develop educational resources. We know that mooting is something that there isn't a whole lot of documentation nationally in Canada for that. So we're very committed to trying to reduce the barriers for entry um, and uh, try and make this accessible for students so that they have these practical opportunities no matter where in Canada they are located. And to encourage students to develop these interests so that if they do find that this is something that is really enjoyable, they can bring those skills forward into their university studies as well as potentially into their, uh, their time in the workplace. And the other thing that we're quite committed to is the idea of uh, promoting access to legal education. We know that this is an equity issue where many students don't have um, access to, uh, to speaking to, to lawyers and or understanding the way that the justice system works. So by establishing scholarships and um, trying to pair teams up with volunteer coaches from the legal profession, we see ourselves as being able to bridge an important gap there and uh, make it so that students have the ability to, uh, to talk to lawyers and find out a little bit what they do. I know for me, I never had really the chance to talk to lawyers until I probably hit about the, uh, the first year of law school or something like that. And in my opinion, it would have been nicer to be able to speak to lawyers um, much earlier on in the process there. And that's something that we think is very important in terms of the opportunities that we can create here. In terms of the competitions that we're going to be holding, we have two competitions that we're working on right now, and we'll break them down a little bit. The first one is the Dominion Mar Varsity Cup Moot. And I'll explain a little bit more about why mooting is so exciting and ex an accessible form of competition in just a moment. But the mechanics of this competition are that it's going to be held on June 12th and 13th, 2021. It's going to be a low barrier for entry. So really easy to get into. It only requires two competitors per team. Uh, students compete in, in teams against uh, other teams. And each uh, team is going to be guaranteed to be doing two rounds. So students are scored based on their advocacy. So it's not just based on kind of winning and losing the actual merits of the, uh, the situation, but how well students uh, critically analyze the case, how well they present their case, how well they respond to questions by judges. So we're certainly going to be developed or sorry, uh, distributing a scoring rubric as the competition gets closer for, for students to have a look at, but that's the way the scoring is going to be done. It'll take about one hour per round, so the time commitment is not going to be super much for students to uh, get involved with this. The top four teams being scored will move on to the semifinals, and then the top two teams will compete in the finals to be crowned the champion. And we know that with the pandemic going on right now, um, there's a lot of uncertainty. So we've decided to hold this over Zoom. We think that's the most accessible option for students and just for uh, ease of access for students and educators across Canada. And we think that's one of the, uh, one of the really nice things about holding this online is that we can open this up to uh, competitors from across Canada and establish um, a, a national presence here. And that's one thing that, uh, that we think is an awesome opportunity to uh, connect students across Canada. The cost, we've tried to make it extremely accessible, $20 per team to, to really just kind of cover the costs of, uh, of this. So just to keep that barrier for entry low and we have uh, cash prizes and more, which uh, will be for the, uh, the teams that move on in this. Now, I do also want to mention just as we get into the mooting, that the barrier for entry is quite low in the sense that um, all the materials that you need to prepare for this would are, are provided by us. There's no outside research required. There isn't a, a, an extreme time commitment required. And, and we think that's one of the exciting things about mooting is that um, is that it can be a lot more accessible and easy to get into than a mock trial, which sometimes requires a lot more um, organizing of teams and, and witnesses. But we are certainly gearing up 
later in the year in November to hold a uh, competitive mock trial competition. And more details are gonna be forthcoming on that. But we are very cognizant in Ontario that many students are interested and are competing in uh, OGEN's um, mock trial competition. So we see ourselves as, as complementary to, to that. And we, uh, we, we look at that as uh, fitting into kind of the overall mock trial calendar in terms of providing students with additional opportunities to uh, practice their skills going forward there. So you can see the timeline looks like that. So the Dominion Varsity Cup being held in June, and then the, uh, the Dominion mock trial it, uh, competition is going to be held later in uh, November. And, and we think this is an ideal time span to give students the chance to, uh, to compete, to, to time so that it's at good portions in the school year for students and for teachers. And that's the roadmap going forward for us here. Now, a little bit about why mooting is, is so exciting, we think to us is what a moot really is, is it's a competition that simulates an appeal. So what an appeal is, is where a lower court will provide a decision on a particular legal case. And if one of the parties is not happy about that decision, they can ask a higher court to have a look at it. So they kind of appeal to a higher court. And the idea is that a moot is two teams competing during that appeal. So one team will be the party that is challenging that previous decision. And the other team will be the party that is responding to that uh, decision and trying to have that decision upheld or affirmed. So we think this really uh, links in very well to the curriculum across Canada. We're, one of our big aspirations is to make sure that we're being responsive in our moot offerings to uh, the areas covered both uh, really in the provincial curriculums across Canada with respect to, to law. And uh, many of the cases that students will be reading in class are from the Supreme Court of Canada. And the Supreme Court of Canada is exclusively, or rather almost exclusively, an appeals court. So we think that's a really exciting way to get students interested and, and, and doing the, uh, the work on the types of cases that they are learning about in class at the uh, grade 11 and grade 12 level in Ontario. So another really exciting thing about mooting is it's a form of uh, competitive advocacy at law schools and university. It's, it's almost like um, competitive sports if you think of it that way. It's very popular. It's quite prestigious in the sense that at many law schools, they have the championship banners hanging of the moot teams that won various competitions. So it's uh, a really exciting way to, for, uh, for law students and for, uh, for interested uh, parties to compete. And we're excited to bring that to the high school level in a really accessible way and provide students with a bit of that on-ramping to uh, start developing their uh, legal advocacy skills if they're, uh, they're interested. And the panelists will speak a little bit later in the session about why these skills are so transferable in terms of advocacy and in, in terms of uh, critical reasoning and how even for students who are not um, necessarily sure that you want to get into law. The advocacy and critical reasoning are skills that um, the development of will be helpful both in the workplace as well in, as in uh, post-secondary school there. So it's always an excellent opportunity to develop those skills that are transferable across uh, different courses, different areas of learning. And we think that's one of the really exciting benefits of mooting. And finally, mooting is actually mandatory at many law schools. So, cert so certainly for me, the first time I mooted was during a mandatory moot in the first year of law school. And, uh, you know, I kind of wish at the time I had gotten a head start at some of this. So this is a great way for students to, uh, in a low pressure environment, um, kind of uh, access a little bit of, of, um, of what law students are doing and to um, get a head start on some of those, some of those aspirations, and there's an excellent. Uh, the one of the really exciting things is that this is transferable, in the sense that uh, for students who do kind of get bitten by the mooting bug, you can bring that forward. In the sense that uh, many undergraduate programs hold moots as well for students who are interested in going to law school. So uh, students have the opportunity to really take this as far as as they like, and we're excited to provide them with that opportunity. And you can see here, this is a picture of, uh, of a moot going on at Osgoode Hall Law School. So a few things to really briefly know about mooting is that the case scenario 
is distributed ahead of time to participants. And this is usually a uh, real life court case. And in, in our circumstance, it is definitely going to be <laughs> um, a uh, Supreme Court case. And the case, it, it has everything that you need to participate. So you don't need anything else. It's really accessible. All the information is going to be made available and students are going to be able to work through that. We've tailored this so that it's going to be at the high school. Uh, it's going to be appropriate for high school students. And this includes all the facts, the law, the potential arguments. Students compete in pairs. So they provide judges with their arguments. And one of the fun things is that judges are allowed to ask questions at any time. So lawyers are uh, expected to be able to respond to questions in real time. And this is a, this is a wonderful skill to develop in terms of having that kind of conversation with judges and being ready to, uh, to uh, respond to any arguments that are being made. And many lawyers say this is one of the most thrilling parts of appearing in court. So that's a great way for students to connect their learning with the learning that, or rather with the work that lawyers actually do. And like we said before, the competitors are evaluated based on their knowledge of the law and persuasiveness. Okay, so a couple interesting things to to point out is that on the uh, is that on the uh, the website actually we have a uh, mooting guide. So if you go to dominionmocktrial.com and you go to about and you go down to moot court, we have a very um, very comprehensive sort of guide to mooting and why we think this is such an accessible and, and fun way for students to get into um, competing in, in this way. So we will, uh, you can see it'll talk about the roles, the steps in terms of coming out with arguments, the different legal arguments. And we won't cover, of course, all of that today, but it all it is there if you're interested in uh, starting to get set up to compete in this competition. Okay, And, and there is other information on the website in terms of signing up. So if you go to competition and upcoming events, it'll direct you to where to sign up for the Varsity Cup, as well as some other information about the uh, competition there. Okay. So there's plenty of information there. We went over a little bit of earlier about the difference between the appellant, who's the challenger of the case, and the respondent, who is kind of defending the previous case. And ultimately, students will either be responsible for being the appellant and the respondent, but students will want to prepare to be both given that there are multiple rounds. So it'll be, uh, it'll be uh, uh, important for students to understand both uh, sides of the issue. And in terms of signing up for the Dominion Varsity Cup, like I was saying earlier, anyone can uh, visit dominionmocktrial.com and click sign up to fill out the questionnaire. You'll be able to indicate who your uh, teammate will be. So, uh, so students will sign up in teams and be able to compete with, uh, with someone they know. So uh, you'll just let us know there and then submit the $20 fee and the case will be coming out on May 24th. And after this presentation, we will be emailing uh, everyone with a guide, some information for mooting, a guide to how that's all done for, uh, for students and, and teachers and parents to be able to read. Okay, so we'll have that'll be all really accessible there and we are available uh, via email for any questions that may come up during this. Okay, so the registration is there. So that brings me to the second part of the presentation. And um, before, before I do that, I just like to ask if anyone has any quick questions that, uh, that, that they'd like to bring up now. If not, we can always uh, bring up the questions at the end of this presentation. Uh, just one quick question, if I may. Yes, absolutely. Hi, um, our team, hi, I think um, our team's limited to just high school students or are undergrad students allowed to compete as well? Um, we're keeping this, I think, to just high school students um, right now, just uh, to make to make it kind of a fair playing field for everybody. But we're looking at uh, building up undergraduate competitions as well. So more on that at a future date. OK, sounds good. Thank you. Great, thanks. Uh, uh, our we have a separate team that's working on that actually we're already so if, if you are an undergrad if anyone here is an undergrad and is interested uh the competition will be happening in august okay sounds great i'm a grade 12 so this would be my last year to do the high school one so i was wondering for like future like longevity and with um participating okay thank you great no problem yeah that's something that uh we're we're very uh interested as well and that's another thing that we are working on is as john said 
So we'll, we'll be able to take other questions at the end of the presentation uh, as well. But with that in mind, we will uh, move on to uh, to our panelists here. So just by way of brief introduction, we have, uh, first of all, we have Stephen Marshan, who uh, is a first year or rather finishing, finished, just finished first year uh, law student at Osgoode Hall Law School. He's a very prolific mooter. He won the 2019 Osgoode Cup moot and he's very involved in moot coaching. So a wonderful resource in terms of his experiences, um, both in terms of how mooting has helped him as well as tips for students who are interested in mooting. We have Dalila Abikic, who's a uh, articling, incoming articling student at Gardner Roberts LLP. She just finished her JD at Osgoode Hall Law School as well. And she's been very involved in mooting, both as a member of the Osgoode Hall Law School moot team, as well as competing in several international uh, law moots. So she has wonderful uh, experience and advice on that. And then we have John Wu, who's uh, JD, finishing J his JD MBA at uh, Osgoode Hall Law School. He is the founder of Dominion Mock Trial, and he was a prolific mooter at, uh, at Osgoode as well there. So we're really, uh, it's, it's really a privilege to have uh, three um, really experienced mooters who are passionate about it and have so much advice to provide us all with. So we'll start off with the first question. We'll get each of our panelists to really just give us a, a fairly quick um, overview of, of uh, their experiences when it comes to mooting. So the, the first question for them is, how did you get involved with mooting and, and what skills did this teach you? So I'll, I'll turn it over to John first for, uh, for his answer on this. Oh, John, you're on mute. mute. There we go. Yeah, so my uh, first experience with mooting was uh, in pretty much the first month of law school. Uh, Osgood hosts a competition called the Learners Cup, uh, where, you know, basically all the first year students are invited to participate. And, you know, we're given about two weeks to prepare for a case. And this is literally like in the first month of law school. So everyone's, you know, heading in pretty much blind. Uh, most people with not that good an idea of what really mooting was. Um, and, you know, I will say it was a really, really sort of impactful experience for me just because my first time, uh, I wasn't very good at all, frankly. <laughs> um, I went in with a total wrong conception, really, of what mooting was. Um, and it's something I probably should have looked up a little bit more uh, before heading in. Uh, but regardless, you know, it was still a super fun experience. Uh, I had a great time doing it. Um, and I learned so much, you know, from, from that first time around. Um, and the one sort of big takeaway I think that I, I sort of got from that experience was really simplifying things. Um, heading in, you know, this is my first time doing like a legal advocacy thing. I, I'd done debate before, but never something like that. I was under the impression that, you know, you had to talk all formal and use big language and, you know, be dramatic and stuff like that. And, you know, in, in reality, mooting um, and a lot of legal advocacy is just about taking complex things and saying it in a really, really simple way that, pretty much anyone can understand. Uh, using clear, concise communication uh, for things that are complicated. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's probably the one sort of skill that I, I've taken away from mooting that I, I still use every single day. Great, thanks, John. That's, uh, that's awesome to hear. And um, it's, it's always a great experience to be able to take really the, the legal skills that you learned in class and put them in a very practical scenario where you have to think about exactly how you're conveying that. And that's, uh, that's so valuable to hear about. So I'll turn it over to uh, Dalila now. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to see so many people here. I, uh, I sometimes think that, uh, like, I wish I had had this opportunity back in high school. Uh, so I, like John, also got my first uh, experience with mooting during my first year at all good. Uh, but I had done some uh, like high school mock trial competitions before, um, but mooting, as John has said, is it's a little different. Um, I really enjoyed it right from the get go. Um, I think if you enjoy public speaking or you feel like there is uh, some area for improvement in that area, um, this is definitely the, uh, the competition for you. Um, I would say one of the biggest takeaways uh, has been the value of teamwork. There's something really valuable in terms of being able to collaborate and work together as you dissect a complicated legal problem. Um, it's pretty cool how, you know, you might see a certain thing in a certain way while your colleague might have a completely different interpretation. So just being able to work together on something like that was, uh, was quite cool for me. 
Yeah, great. Thanks, uh, Dalila. And, that, and the teamwork aspect, for those of us who have played competitive sports, is we, we can really speak to how valuable that is. And I think that um, bringing that into the into the legal sphere and in terms of applying those legal skills, this is so valuable. And, and uh, certainly I can speak to the fact that in legal practices, so much of it is teamwork based. So having the opportunity to develop those skills at an early stage is, is really great and, and a wonderful opportunity. So thanks for that, uh, Dalila. And I'll turn it over to uh, Stephen now. Yeah, thanks, Matthew. Uh, thanks, everyone. So I have a little bit of a different experience compared to John and Delilah. So I was lucky enough to get started with mooting in undergrad. Uh, I did my undergraduate degree at Carleton. And uh, it, it's not something that every school practices. So not everybody has the opportunity in undergrad to go to moots, to have a moot team. It's something that certain specific schools do. And so um, obviously, a lot of people are going to be like John and Delilah and get that experience first off in law school, but um, I just found out about it because I was a, a general member of the Law Society, which they do have at most undergraduate schools, and I just kind of found out about the Moot team as this competitive aspect that was combining a lot of the things that I like to do basically from the start of high school. So I've always been interested in public speaking. I've always done the debate competitions. I've always been interested in a career in law, but at that time I wasn't totally sure which way I was gonna go. Uh, but Moot really just convinced me that, you know, a career in law is the right path for me. And I really enjoyed a lot of the, the same things that have already been discussed, the teamwork, the competitive aspect. And one of the things that has been the most um, important thing for me that I first learned uh, through Moot was how it's able to humanize what can sometimes be an intimidating area of work, an intimidating profession. Uh, like Matthew, I'm a first generation law school student, so I didn't have any lawyers in the family to talk about what it's like being a lawyer, what the legal profession is like. And certainly the first time you open a Supreme Court of Canada case, it can be intimidating and it can feel like you don't know what's going on. But really Moot just uh, exposed me to a group of students who had the same goals that I had, who were as driven and as motivated as I was. And I think more importantly, you know, exposing you to networking with real judges and real lawyers, and you get to see that these are real people just like us. And that was probably the main thing that I got from Moot. So it was a, a fantastic experience. And really, I think the, the work of, of Dominion Mock Trial is very important for that reason, because there is a gap from the high school moot opportunities to the undergrad moot opportunities. It's so prevalent in law school and yet there's not a lot of people doing it at the high school level. So highly encourage everybody to uh, get involved with it. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for that, Stephen. I think you spoke to a number of valuable things there in terms of the, uh, the cross-curricular sort of opportunities um, in terms of connecting the uh, learning and the skills that's, that a student can learn during mooting as well as the sort of joy that comes from working with a bunch of very committed people on um, on, on a competition. I think that's a, that's a wonderful skill and it's great to hear about how that really got you quite interested and engaged in law, even at the undergraduate level and gave you, I think a bit of a head start. it would be fair to say over someone like me who, who had not had those experiences before. So that's great. Thanks to for our panelists uh, for sharing on, on that question. So the next question is what benefits does mooting have for you in school, in your, for your work in school as well as today? So I'll pass that on to John first. Sure, yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of sort of benefits I think that mooting has had in terms of my professional development. One of the things that I'll never sort of forget is, uh, you know, some of the people I've met um, a few years ago, I did have the opportunity to, uh, you know, to participate in an international moot where I had the chance to meet quite a few uh, legal professionals from overseas. Um, and you know, fortunately, I am still in touch with a few of them. Um, and not that long ago, uh, there was a sort of a legal issue that popped up uh, with the business that I work on. And I had the sort of opportunity to, you know, like dig into this legal issue a bit, but realize that instead of like just doing all the research myself, um, wait a second, I know this lawyer who works in this exact area from overseas. So I ended up, uh, you know, giving this person a quick uh, quick message through LinkedIn. 
Um, and they were able to provide me with some guidance that saved me quite a few hours in terms of the work. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things that like, you know, uh, you wouldn't typically think about when you talk about like doing a sort of competitive activity like mooting. Uh, but the people you do meet and the bonds that you do forge really do matter. Um, and in, in your career, I think that's always something super important to, uh, you know, to keep sight of, right? Um, you know, these connections that you make in, in a lot of ways, you know, they're, they're the things that will, you know, truly sort of pay off uh, well into the future. Yeah, great. Thanks for that, John. And we, we say often that it's, it's almost never too early to start networking. And for, for all the high school students, it's an awesome, awesome opportunity to uh, really step into a professional role and get some practice at, at doing that. So thanks for, thanks for that, John. So I'll pass it on to uh, Dalila now. Sure. So if I can piggyback on that point, um, I think that opportunity to be able to meet different kinds of people, different types of work personalities is, is really important, uh, especially at a time when you might be transitioning from uh, like high school to post-secondary education, or in my case, I am uh, leaving school for a while and kind of going into legal practice and actually working. So I think being able to network uh, at that level allows you to really cultivate a, a professional persona. Um, you know, to see kind of how you do in a work environment um, that is very different from a, a classroom environment. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. And um, I, I can speak as teachers, we're always looking for opportunities to connect the learning we do in the classroom and the critical thinking we do with um, with opportunities for students to get involved. And, and that sounds like that's one of the awesome things that you found in uh, Mooting is being able to connect the, your sort of uh, formal education to your eventual um, sort of legal practice. So that's a that's a wonderful opportunity there. So I'll pass it on to uh, Stephen now. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, lots of benefits that John and Dalila have already talked about. I think in my experience as a still a mooter and as a coach for many years, the kinds of things that I think mooting can provide can be kind of put into two main categories. So the first category are really the practical legal skills that you learn and that are useful if you decide to go on to law school and a career as a lawyer. And so that's basic stuff like how to read a case. Uh, how to create a legal argument because, uh, you know, as John and Delila and Matthew know, that is often a skill in itself that you have to learn when you first go to law school. So if you can get a head start on that, it's very, very beneficial. And then again, I think just uh, making kind of that legalese language sound clear, putting a complex set of ideas into an easy to understand format is really important when you're mooting. So I would say those are the practical skills that you learn from doing this. But I think more importantly are the life skills that Moot teaches you, because those are things that students will get and they will take with them regardless of whether they pursue a career in law or anywhere else. And some of the biggest ones that I've seen are uh, teamwork, our responsibility, so learning how to work as part of a team, but also learning how to carry your own weight. And when you're up there presenting in front of judges, making sure that you've done your part to ensure the success of the team. And then I think just perseverance and, and that work ethic that often comes with going to law school and a career in law, you know, the long nights that you spend working with a team, reading through cases, thinking of arguments. Um, it sounds like a hard working process, but when you have a group of students that are interested in it, it goes very well. And then I think the biggest thing overall, the biggest life skill that I've seen is confidence. And confidence I know is something that a lot of students struggle with. And especially as a coach, I see it where, you know, students will come into the room and when they first meet you, you know, they're not even able to stand up in front of a group of people and tell you what the weather is. But really Mood has this way of bringing out people's confidence and showing them that they can do this, that they can take on a task that they're interested in and do the hard work and they can uh, seek those rewards that some of the other panelists have already talked about. So I think developing confidence is the biggest thing that translates either to a career in law or, or anywhere students go after they move. Yeah, great. No, that's, that's so valuable to hear, Stephen. And I think... Um, what I certainly take away from that is that uh, really students can get ahead by, by, you know, gaining that confidence, building that resiliency through moots. And I think one of the exciting things about this moot competition here at Dominion is that it's an accessible way to do that, is that you kind of uh, build up 
a bit of your uh, of your case reading skills and everything that uh, your legal argumentative skills and everything that comes along with that, but in an accessible way where you're not just being tossed uh, <laughs> kind of completely in the deep end like we are in in law school a little bit. So I think that's an exciting thing is the accessibility and and it is a, a welcoming environment for for students. So that moves us on to uh, just the last four minutes, our last uh, question to provide panelists with the opportunity to just provide one thing about mooting that you want people to know. So I'll, uh, I'll turn that over to john first. Yeah, this is a tough one, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> one thing. One thing about mooting, I'd say, is it's something that really does test your ability to think on your feet. Uh, because of the nature of it is, you know, you're standing up there before a panel of judges and the judges are, you know, basically just, you know, peppering you with questions. You can't really go in there with a game plan and expect to execute that game plan the way you want to, right? At the end of the day, your, your role is to instruct the judges on what they should do to tell them what the law is and help them understand. So to that end, you know, you can't just go in there and be like, this is my plan and I'm going to stick with it. You have to sort of be able to go with the flow. Um, and, and that's something that I, I find that makes it quite different from a lot of other forms of advocacy and uh, makes it particularly exciting to be a part of. Yeah, great. Thanks for thanks for that, John. Building up that adaptability and making those uh, connections, that's a, always a great thing. So I'll uh, pass it over to Dalila. Sure. So I think we've, we've kind of talked about the moot as a competition first and foremost tonight. But I think what I want to uh, also say is, is the fact that even though hearing it uh, come across as a competition, it's way more than just performing well. Um, I'd like to encourage you to think a little bit about a moot like a adding or diversifying more uh, like skills and experiences that are going to be part of your professional toolbox, if you will. Um, so alongside being able to meet different kinds of people, alongside being able to build confidence, writing skills, persuasive um, speaking skills, you'll also really learn by doing um, in a very safe and uh, supportive environment while uh, presumably uh, being uh, like able to also have fun, uh, you know, as well. Yeah, no, great. Thanks for that, Dalil. And certainly what that makes me think of is um, we talk a lot in education about the power of not yet and growth mindset. And we think that um, in terms of the power of, of engaging in things that go a little bit outside your comfort zone, but in the end you grow into the role and you are able to develop those skills. We think mooting is one of those really exciting things. And I think you speak uh, perfectly to that idea there. So I'll turn it over to uh, Stephen now. Yeah, so I really echo what John and Dalila said about a lot of those hard skills that Moot can teach you about thinking on your feet and about, you know, perseverance. Um, maybe if I can offer a bit of a different angle, I think the thing I would want people to know about Moot is that it's more colorful than the words on the black and white pages. And that sounds uh, rhetorical, but I can explain a bit more. So obviously I think that people can be easily intimidated by the pages on the, uh, the pages that you get and the cases that you're reading. It can seem very dense and kind of boring. Like a lot of students are wondering, is this something I'm interested in? Is this something I'm capable of doing? But I think that the rewards that you get from that are so much more than just getting in front of judges and arguing a case. Obviously, that's important if you're excited in that, but it just get, opens so many doors for you. I mean, the students that you meet when you go to competitions from across the province or across the country, you really do develop connections that, that stay with you to this day. Um, the opportunities that you have to meet lawyers and judges in the field, you know, these tournaments often result in job opportunities and learning more about the legal profession. And then I also think it also teaches you a lot about yourself and your resiliency and what you are able to overcome if you put your mind to it. So I think I would encourage people to look past it. It's not just, you know, dense work that lawyers do sitting in an ivory tower. It really is uh, practical, it's useful, it's colorful. And when you really get interested in it, um, it's incredibly rewarding. 
Yeah, great. Thanks for that, Stephen. That's such a strong endorsement of uh, of the benefits of, of mooting, and that's always wonderful to hear. So that brings our panel to a close. We have um, a few next steps. If you are interested in learning more about the uh, the moot competition or in terms of signing up, you can head over to the Dominion mock trial website. You can check out the information there. It's very comprehensive and um, will also uh, help uh, perhaps answer any lingering questions that you might have. And we will be following up to this with a uh, with a beginner's guide to mooting, you know, how to how to read a case with some information for everyone who's uh, who's interested there for for everybody to uh, to have a look at if you are interested. And we are offering a uh, referral program where um, if you refer a friend to our uh, our mooting competition here, uh, you'll be entered into a draw for a $50 gift card. We want to make this event as wide ranging as possible. So uh, we do have that offer there as well going on. So at this point, um, I know our time has run out. So I just like to thank everyone so much for being here tonight with us. We're so delighted that so many people are interested in learning more about mooting and, and what we do. So with that in mind, I will open the floor to any uh, questions if anyone like would like to stay and uh, ask any questions to us and the panelists. But other than that, I, again, thank you so much for being here tonight and, uh, and have a good night. And we hope to see many of you um, signing up for the uh, competition. So thanks so much for being with us. And if anyone does have any questions, you can feel free to put in the chat or you can uh, turn on your microphone and, and, and we can uh, answer some of those questions. Um, I just had another um, question, it's Rory. Um, Hi, I was Rory. just wondering if you could, um, where do the, like what type of law do the cases normally fall in or is it not really limited? You can do a moot case about really any form of law. That's a, that's a really excellent question. Um, the, the first answer, to you know, what could it, could it be generally as a moot could be really about any particular legal issue. For us here, we're aware of uh, what's covered in the curriculum in high schools is that it is that virtually all students across Canada are covering uh, constitutional law and, and criminal law. So those are the areas that we're really focusing on for the high school level moots is, is we're trying to make that connection between what you're learning probably in the classroom and the, uh, the moot, the, the areas of law that we're covering here. Uh, does that answer your question a bit? Yes, it's perfect. Thank you. No problem. And if anyone does uh, think of any other questions as, uh, as, as you're reading through any of the information, please do feel free to email us. We'd be happy to get into contact with you and provide you with uh, any answers or clarification. So if we're if if we're if everyone's okay on the uh, the questions, I will uh, we'll start closing the call. So again, uh, feel, do feel free to email us if you have any questions, and uh, we'd really be delighted, hopefully, to see many of you signing up. Uh, no problem, Rory. So thanks for everyone. Uh, no problem, Fiona. Thanks everyone for uh, being here tonight. And uh, again, please feel free to be uh, to be in contact with us. So thanks, Miriam. Thanks, April.